Welcome back to our look at a development of a training diary. This is part two of a video, so look at part one if you are just getting up to speed. What we have done so far is create the first part of the diary, which is a wellness section. We did some data validation and we've set up, as you can see, rows 1 down to 13. Now we're going to continue to put in a bit more diary data entry space, looking firstly at training information and then just creating a bit of space for some comments. So we'll get right into that now. Um, I have created on the control panel a list of training types. I've called that named range training type. So we can go straight into this section here and I can actually hold my control key down and do all of these at once. Click on data, data, valid, data validation list. If I click inside the source button and I hit F3, what happens is any names that I have created pop up. It makes it quite a lot easier to, to pick and choose rather than remember what you called something. So I'm going to click training type <coughs> and OK. So now what we'll see is um, we can pick what type of training session we have completed. So uh, obviously you can create your own list here but uh, I've just made it simple for now with just four training types. Next data validation that I'm going to do is for the duration of training. So just like before I'm going to hold the control button down and select the total minutes columns, data validation, whole number between one and let's say 300 just to be safe and finally RPE same deal decimal 1 to 10 just like we did with the wellness questions so someone can put in a, a RPE of 7.5 if they want to you could put an error alert on this one just in case they randomly choose a number above 10. Great. Alright, so that is complete. We can just for completeness sake put in a bit of space for them to write comments. Just drag that down and hit control 1 which is a great keyboard shortcut and wrap text so for example they can write a whole lot of stuff there and um, just to give the trainer sports scientist a little bit more information if required so there we are we've got in a very short space of time three sections to our training diary. We could tidy that up and make it look a certain way later on, but we've got wellness questions, training questions, and some space to write comments. So what I'm going to do now is, is some stuff that's a little bit more complicated. What I want to be able to do is calculate training volumes and durations and get some summary data in place. So I just want to put in a few training sessions. Just to allow us to work through the examples with some real information. Okay, I'll do a couple more. Great, alright, so Unfortunately, this process often requires a little bit of duplication, but what I believe is that you don't want the diary to be cluttered with this kind of stuff. Do this somewhere else so that the data entry place looks as clean as possible. So if we go to the control panel page, what I have done <coughs> is I've simply used direct cell references to pull through, excuse me, pull through the data from 
the diary page and I've just reordered it because as you'll see in a second the ability to do um, count ifs and sum ifs requires the data to be arranged in a certain way so what I've done here is I've got all the session types all the durations and all the RPEs in, um, in order and so as you can see just direct cell references so all I've done is, is simply uh, directly reference Monday session type to what I had typed on the previous page so what I can do down here <coughs> is I can use a formula called sum if and if I'm clever about it I can just copy that all the way across without too much duplication of effort so sum if asks you for a range <coughs> it asks for a criteria what we want to find out here is the total duration of football training on Monday. Alright, so if we look at what I've just put in this formula, what it's saying is that if in cells H11 to H14 the word football appears, then we want to sum the corresponding value in cells 15 to 18. If I hit enter, what we'll see is that it correctly picks up that there was 120 minutes. Football was the second session, there was 120 minutes long. If we go back to the diary page, pick football again, put down 90 minutes, what we'll find is when we go back to the other page, it correctly figures out that 90 plus, 100 and, 90 plus 120 is 210. So our formula is good. Unfortunately, we haven't completed it yet because if we want to be able to copy it down we need to get the dollar signs correctly in place so if I select that little part of the formula and I hit F4 what it does is it locks the entire range down both column and row numbers we don't want that because we want to be able to copy it across the Tuesday and Wednesday so if I hit F4 again it toggles its way through to the next option which is just locking down the row numbers that's what I want. I need to do the same thing for the range that is being summed. There we go. And what I need to do for G4, G4 is uh, currently selecting football. We want to lock that column but not the row so we can copy that down. So if we look through that, there's now a whole bunch more dollar signs in there. It's the same formula but it's now going to give us the ability to just drag that down and it'll do everything for us. So let's try that out. Copy that down and copy that across. Fantastic, so that worked just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go down to this next one and paste it in there. So what this next section is, some people are interested in average intensity. So uh, to calculate that, we can use the same process, but we just got to edit things a little bit. So if I click here, what I am looking at is that, okay, we're okay with regard to the first variable, but we need to drag this down to there because now what we want to be looking at is the RPEs. Now if I hit enter, it's not telling us what we want because it is a sum. So I can simply edit that and change that to average if. Perfect. So the football intensities were 7 and 4. That gives an average of 5.5. So if I drag that down, look at that. We get some errors because if you know your maths and average dividing by a zero always gives you an error so we can fix that we've used this one before already in this tutorial if error is a great way to take that problem away so drag it across and that's the second part completed the third part to complete is a summary of those previous two parts, so duration and intensity. Uh, what I am a fan of is moderating the load 
calculation that a lot of people use. I don't think it's a good calculation at all. Load equals RPE times duration. The reason I don't like it is that there's no way a 60 minute strength training session that may have incorporated some heavy strength work, some power training. <laughs> Let's say you put a, an RPE of 8 down. There's no way that that has the same impact on the body as a aerobic session of the same duration of the same intensity. An aerobic session you can recover from very quickly. A strength training session might take a few days. So I always like moderating the load by some kind of factor. And you can determine this yourself. I've put some numbers in here. Basically what this means is that for every football session it's unchanged. It's RPE times duration. Aerobic is a little bit less. Strength and power is a little bit more than one. So I've created a lookup table. If you look here up the top you see I've created and I've called it load factors. So I'm going to try and do a calculation here and hopefully if I get it right we can just drag it and complete the entire set. So I'm calculating load so I've written the formula here RPE times duration times load factor equals RPE five point five duration two ten times if we look up at football where are we looking it up a table called load factors the answer that we want is in column two and we want an exact map. So if I hit enter now, what we'll get is a calculation that is really just 5.5 .5 times 210, but it includes this load factor. So if I look at the formula, we just modify it a little bit because I want to make sure that when I drag it around it doesn't go astray. So all I have to do here is lock down the column number for the sport, uh, that for the training type, which in this case is football. So let's see how this goes. Great, so it's worked. The problem is when there's no values in place it comes up with an error. So once again, I can use my if error drag it down, drag it across. Fantastic. Alright, we're nearly there. If I want to sum the durations, sum the loads, and average the RPEs, then that's great. I already know in advance that this is going to come up with an error if we don't put this in front. <coughs> so I'll do that straight away. Alright, so we're looking good. And what we've created now is the ability to really manipulate the training loads and look at things from day to day. Thanks for checking the video out. This is part two. Part three will finish things off. What we will do is copy this particular athlete's results into a master page. I'll show you that page here. And we can work through the processes that you might go through to uh, put together a, a team diary where 10 or, or more people are sending you some information. And so I've completed most of the work now the last part is relatively easy, so come back for part three and we'll get straight into it.